Have you always dreamed of being your own boss? Do you like helping other people? What's your biggest fear when it comes to realizing your dreams? Hello, everyone, and welcome to another brand new episode on my channel, Wander Boho Book Club. Today, I'll be talking about the book "Start Something That Matters," written by Blake Mikoski. Blake Mikoski is an American entrepreneur, author, and philanthropist. He's the founder of Tom Shoes and co-founder of Made for. Blake's mission is to prove that you can achieve financial success and make the world a better place at the same time. In Start Something That Matters, Blake shares the six counterintuitive principles that have guided the growth of Tom's for the past three years. Make business personal. Be resourceful without resources. Reverse retirement. Keep it simple. Stay humble, and give more. Advertise less. The result is an inspiring account of a young man whose entrepreneurial spirit was able to effect change in the world, and a call to others to be inspired to do the same. Before moving ahead. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Part one: Own your fear. We all have dreams. Many of us dream of traveling the world, while many dream of becoming a celebrity. Yet many others dream of creating their own startups. While building our own company from scratch gives us the opportunity of being our own boss. The hard truth is that most of us get cold feet when it comes to taking action and beginning the process of building a startup. The reason why we don't act upon our dreams is that we are assailed by negative thinking from the onset, worrying about the challenges and obstacles we might face along the way, our lack of experience in running a business, limited resources at our disposal, etc., and fearing. That our business plan will fail. This fear makes us give up even before we take the first step. However, being afraid is not only limited to starting a business; it percolates in every other aspect of our lives. Everyone is afraid at some point, even if we don't like to acknowledge it. It's common for people to feel anxious when they have to go for an interview. Travel to foreign countries, etc., since they don't face these scenarios on a regular basis. In fact, fear is often triggered in us when we are confronted with a new and unfamiliar circumstance. Hence, fear is a completely natural coping mechanism in us and has nothing to do with shame or embarrassment. Sadly, in our modern culture. We avoid discussing our anxieties openly, mainly because we think we might be ridiculed by others if we come clean about our fears. But suppressing our fears can have a much worse impact on us than being humiliated. Not only can it take away some golden opportunities from our lives that might otherwise transform us, long-term suppression of our fears may lead to chronic psychological problems and depression. For example, imagine a person who's apprehensive of job interviews. Without confronting and overcoming this phobia, he won't be able to explore better job opportunities. Or, consider the case of a person who has a phobia of flying. His anxiety may lead him to lose out on important life experiences, such as vacations with his family, conferences that he would have enjoyed. Employment prospects he would have liked, and trips to new places that would have inspired him. Part two. What's your fear? Although it sounds like a tall order, one of the best strategies to overcome your phobias is to confront them head-on with a come-what-may attitude. This tactic is helpful in dealing with almost any kind of fear. If you're afraid of heights. It might be a good idea to give bungee jumping a shot. 
It will probably be one of the most exhilarating experiences of your life. Similarly, if you're terrified of dogs, try petting your friend's dog the next time you see it. Chances are that you will fall in love with the animal. The only way to overcome your fear is to prepare yourself for it. One of the most effective ways to do this is to make a list of all the things you're afraid of. This is exactly what the author did when he was going to launch Tom's in Argentina. He was assailed with doubts about whether he should take the plunge, especially since he lacked business knowledge and financial resources. He came very close to jumping ship several times simply because of his fear. However, instead of giving in to his fear, he compiled a list of all the things he was afraid of. In addition to that, he also came up with the worst possible outcome should his concerns come true. In his case, his main fear was that his business would fail, and the worst possible outcome was that no one would purchase the shoes made by his firm, and that he would lose all his money and the time he had invested in it. Although it was a horrifying idea, once he wrote it down, he realized that it wasn't all that dreadful. The act of writing itself took some steam off the fear and helped him see the situation in a more optimistic light. He realized that even if his worst nightmare came true, he would still have gained a plethora of new knowledge, skills, and acquaintances as a result of the experience. Thus, we see that when we face our fears head-on, we realize that they were nothing to be scared of after all. Part 3 Life is not about crystal gazing. Establishing a company might seem a mammoth task to many, mainly because we have the erroneous notion that we must have a lot of knowledge and experience before we start down the path of entrepreneurship. Being afraid that you could make a mistake, fail, and lose all your money is natural. We all find comfort in predictability and certainty, and we spend a lot of our energy and time trying to predict the future as accurately as possible, so as to be able to put our best foot forward and minimize losses. In spite of this, the argument is based on flawed logic. Nobody has a crystal ball. Thus, it's impossible to predict what the future will bring. As a result, devising a risk-free approach that is perfect is unattainable. When it comes to your commercial endeavors, however, there are a few simple tactics that might help you overcome your apprehension. By reading biographies and blogs of successful business people, you might learn about their own worries and coping mechanisms. You might feel inspired learning about their struggles with their fears and how they reached where they are today. Writing down your goals and life purpose and pinning them on the wall above your desk is another method to conquer your worries. Having your goals written and in front of your eyes helps your subconscious integrate the message faster. Surrounding yourself with like-minded people and encouraging friends and mentors will also help you keep your energy up and stay motivated. If you want to bring about a change in yourself, you might need to change your environment as well. Part 4 Keep it simple When confronted with something really difficult, our first instinct is to assume that it must be extremely clever. However, this need not necessarily be true. The author here cites the example of complex urban planning feeds, such as an expansive network of subway lines and stations. Though often considered a measuring stick for urban development, a modern subway system in a huge metropolis like New York isn't always smooth sailing, as the many delays and cancellations can attest. Hence, complexity does not always equal brilliance. In reality, the reverse is more often the case. In order to develop anything that is successful, simplicity is the key. 
For example, the most popular designs are often really straightforward. One of the best examples of this is Apple's line of goods. Because of its simple design and ease of use, the iPod was an instant hit with music lovers of all age groups. One rule of thumb for simplifying your life is to focus on the few things that are really important and dismiss everything else. It will be much simpler to keep focused on the large critical objectives if you can let an important little unpleasant things happen. Part 5. Less is more. While designing a new product or solution, we should prioritize simplicity over everything else, as simplicity leads to economy of resources as well. Tom's, the enormously successful shoe company and humanitarian organization founded by the author, exemplifies how to make the most of resource constraints. While beginning his company, the author had very little money. In fact, he didn't even have enough money to purchase business cards when he first started. This may have restricted him, but the author used his limitations as a springboard for creativity. He recycled other people's business cards, that is, after scratching out the original information from their business cards, he handwrote his own name and contact information on them. This unique approach was positively appreciated by the possible investors and business partners because it demonstrated that he was really frugal and devoted to not wasting money when innovative alternatives were available. In the modern age, a perceived lack of resources should no longer constrain anybody thanks to the abundance of free technology and knowledge accessible online today. Unlike 20 or 30 years ago, you may effectively and inexpensively advertise your items by blogging and utilizing social media. Also, you can save money and increase efficiency by utilizing free services like Doodle to schedule business meetings and Google Drive to organize paperwork and store documents online. Thus, instead of feeling bogged down by the lack of resources, use the very limitation as a springboard for the development of a sustainable company strategy based on simplicity and streamlining. Part 6. The Power of Networking Businesses thrive on networking and the success of a new business depends heavily on the level of networking it is able to establish. In fact, one of the first steps to build a sustainable business is to build a motivated, passionate team by expanding your own network and surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals. As a new business owner, you will need a lot of support from other people, whether they are friends or employees. Try to ascertain the specific skills and knowledge the people on your personal network might bring and how these skills might benefit your company model. Here, your personal network might refer to your family, friends, co-workers, etc. Here, the author cites the example of Wikipedia to show the power of collaborative efforts. Non-professional contributors from all around the globe have worked tirelessly to build an online encyclopedia that covers a wide variety of topics. Even though each person just gave a little amount of their time and expertise to this project, it resulted in an enormous amount of data. Also, it's crucial to seek like-minded individuals who share your objectives and have the same passions as you do. In fact, the initial recruits in a new firm should have an optimistic approach towards the project and should bring new and innovative ideas to the table. This inspiring atmosphere will rub off on you as well and will encourage you to think out of the box. Next, the author suggests that we try and cultivate a garage mindset within our work culture. What it essentially means is that we learn to optimize our outputs with minimum inputs and encompass a feeling of mutual solidarity and shared adversity. 
Part Seven. Being a good corporation. If you are asked to choose between two companies, one that is well liked and respected in its workplace and community, and the other that is widely despised yet very profitable, which company do you see yourself running? It's a no-brainer that most of us will go for the first option. Being a good corporation has its own perks. In fact, most of the successful businesses have philanthropy and charitable giving as an integral part of their mission. Here, the author gives the example of Saks Fifth Avenue, a renowned Manhattan department store, which collaborates with the non-profit organization Charity Water. To assist with the provision of safe drinking water for those in need across the globe, the corporation even offered a portion of the display space to the charity, in order to create awareness and request contributions. This collaboration turned out to be a win-win situation for everyone. Saks Fifth Avenue's public image was boosted, clean water was supplied to the developing nations. And morals were boosted for the employees of Saks Fifth Avenue, as they felt proud of being associated with a higher cause. It's imperative that you create a positive image of your company for its employees. After all, why would anyone want to work for an organization they don't respect? One of the best ways to solidify the bond between an employee and a company is by building mutual trust and support. You need to be kind and compassionate towards your employees, and forgive their blunders. As long as the workplace is founded on mutual trust and support, errors may actually serve as helpful learning experiences. The author here talks about an advertising agency, which seems to have come up with an innovative approach towards evaluating employee performance. Mistake of the month is a monthly award given out by the firm. Although it may seem weird, it has helped to create a more open and fun workplace atmosphere. As a result, there is less individual and communal pressure about failure, since everyone is aware that errors may and do happen. This helps individuals to take chances and be inventive. Without feeling humiliated or inadequate when things don't go as planned. Part Eight: The Power of Storytelling. One of the biggest challenges people face while running a business is to figure out the best way to advertise their products and services. While there is always the option of using facts and figures to convey your message, research has shown. That the greatest method to make your product attractive is to tell a fantastic tale about it. Here, the author cites his own company as a testimony to the power of storytelling. The author began his career as an economist with no prior retail experience and a small amount of startup cash. His dream, however, was not only to create a shoe-making company. He wanted to make a difference in the society by providing affordable footwear to underprivileged people in Argentina. Hence, instead of going for hard facts, he weaved a story around his company's mission. He informed the public of his plan to provide a pair of shoes to an Argentine youngster for each pair sold at retail outlets. His story inspired the people and moved them to take action. His innovative approach even attracted a major newspaper from Los Angeles to cover his story. As a result, his business got a massive boost, and people rushed in to buy Tom's shoes because they wanted to be associated with a higher cause. A few years down the line, Tom's is a hugely successful business that benefits both underprivileged children and its employees. Humans are emotional beings, and nothing touches our heart more than an emotional story. By weaving a story around a product or service, we are not only promoting the product, but also providing the company with an identity, making it more tangible and personal to the customers. 
Once a bond is created between the customers and a brand, the company can reap the benefits in the long run, as the customers will feel a personal connection to the brand and stay loyal to it. Conclusion As Blake Mykoski's story shows, you do not need a lot of money or business experience to be successful when starting your own company. You don't need much more than a burning desire and a healthy dose of apprehension to get started. When you are committed to make a difference in the world, fear has no place in your life. The first step in overcoming your fear is to identify it and write down all of the reasons why you're afraid. This can be compared to a list of the worst-case scenarios to help disarm your anxiety. Also, creative problem-solving can help you make the most of your limited resources. You can write your own success story and spread the word about your startup with a little bit of innovative thinking and the help of social media. So, dream big, find a cause you care about and share it with the world because you want to start something that matters. Thank you for watching this episode. Please don't forget to subscribe. Your comments, likes and shares are highly appreciated. See you soon in our next episode.